Hi, I'm Dr. Deepak Meghur. Welcome to yet another intermittent cataract. She is a 60-year-old lady who has this intermittent lens. But the interesting aspect is that the central antechamber depth, which has been documented by biometry, is just around 1.8. As the slit beam traverses to the mid-peripheral region of the antechamber, we can see the iridocorneal contact. So we haven't dilated the pupil as yet because we are worried about this patient developing a phacomorphic lens-induced glaucoma. And we are going to start the patient on IV mannitol and then put in dilating drops before we take the patient to the OR. So that's the plan here. Again, as expected, the challenge always is going to be the rexus creation. The nucleus usually are very soft and not difficult to manage. So let's begin. The surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. I am using a blunt cannula under a small conjunctival peritomy in the inferior medial aspect. And I am going to inject through 1 ml of uh, lignocaine. So important things to note in these uh, white cataracts is we need to get a very good staining. I ensure that adequate amount of uh, trypan blue is placed in that chamber under the air bubble. And maybe I'll wait a few seconds more, allow the capsule to take up the stain very well. So usual would be around 10 to 15 seconds, that's all. Uh, that's the time I usually use to bend my cystitome. The dispersive OVD is introduced into the eye to pressurize the chamber. And then I'm going to create my main incision, which is 2.8 millimeter. The plan is to perform a two-stage rexus. My primary aim is to ensure that I don't want to lose the rexus during the initial primary rexus itself. So as soon as I puncture the capsule, the flap is opened up and it's quite a big flap. I just hold it and I'm consciously using both the tearing and shearing technique as the rexus is being completed. I'm realizing that the control of the capsule is quite good. So don't have any fear of losing it. This intermittent lens is of the fluid variant, I believe, because as the rexus is getting completed, we can see the liquefied fluffy cortex just coming out. So spontaneous decompression had already happened. That's the reason why uh, the rexus is not heading away. Time to decompress the capsular bag. I'm going to use the FACO tip itself along with my second instrument, which is just a long Sinsky. I'm going to aspirate the swollen cortex and also some part of the epinucleus. The nucleus rotation by the second instrument is going to help to loosen out all the lens matter which is there near the equator of the capsular bag and also some of the swollen cortex which is behind the nucleus. By rotating all of this is maneuvered out across the equator into the rexus opening which is then aspirated by the phaco tip. So once I realize that the capsular bag is decompressed sufficiently, now is the time to perform the uh, secondary rexus. OVD is again placed in the peripheral part of the antechamber. And then I'm using a micro scissors to give a tangential cut. And then using a forceps, the rexus is enlarged to the appropriate size. So we can note that once the bag is decompressed, the capsule behaves in a very predictable manner. Now for this case, the most critical step was rexus and the game is essentially over now. Nucleus management is going to be very easy since the nucleus seems to be quite uh, soft and should not be a problem at all. The plan is to do a direct vertical chop. These are the settings for the chop mode. So this case, I was anticipating a very softer nucleus. So that's the reason why the power is set to low. So while chopping, I'm using a power of 15% uh, longitudinal only. The tip is buried in the substance of the nucleus. The sharp vertical chopper goes in and then there's a lateral separation maneuver. So we have two heminucleus here. As expected, the nucleus is quite brittle and very easy to divide and separate. The first heminucleus is now divided into three pieces and each of these fragments are pulled out of the bag and then emulsified at the level of the rexus margin. Obviously, the settings have changed for the quadrant removal mode. And I'm going to use just the torsional mode in for emulsifying these quadrants. Time to deal with the remaining second heminucleus, which is rotated and brought in, in front. And again, it is divided into three smaller fragments using the vertical chop maneuvers. 
During cotton removal again the power is reduced to just 20% so this is good enough for this grid of cataract. Very little cortex is there but still it needs to be removed and some of these fibers could be really sticky and can take some time. A little bit of blowing the posterior capsule does help. Uh, nevertheless, in a few moments, the cortex is taken care of. Time to implant the lens. The bag is filled with ovary and the planned intraocular lens is being maneuvered into the bag. These are the first day post-op pictures. The patient had an unaided visual acuity of 6 by 6. That was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.